Hey you, did you just spend $80 on a digital plane because you wanted the F-16 and thought, wow, this plane looks cool, it's mine now. But now you don't know what to do with yourself because now you're being clobbered and everyone's bullying you for being an American main? Well, fear no more, my friend. Come down to Sauron's workshop and I'll teach you how to be an amazing pilot with the F-4S. Wow. And I'll try to keep your attention span engaged for the entire video. Now, the bread and butter of this plane is the AIM-7 Sparrow. Now, what is a Sparrow, you're wondering? Great question, Kevin. It's a semi-active homing radar missile, or FOX-1, or short for SAR. What that means to you, pretty much, is you gotta keep your nose pointed at that enemy the entire time. While they're locked, and you can only fire while you have a lock on that enemy. Now, the Sparrows have a very long range, about 40 kilometers, which is about 24 miles. But keep in mind, the farther you shoot away, the more time you're giving your enemy to dodge that missile. He'll be dodging that missile using a notch. Now, what is a notch? Great question. Follow me and I'll show you. Oh, hey. All right. Let's explain some notching now, all right? I'm going to use a pen for this. Notching is putting your aircraft at a 90 degree angle from the enemy, okay? So, I'm gonna draw an X right here. This demonstrates you. This is your aircraft, alright? Now your radar has a window where it sees in front of it, okay? That's your window, and it radiates beams to lock the enemy. Enemy aircraft will be this circle right here, okay? Now, if the enemy circle is moving this way, right? He's put your radar lock at a perpendicular angle. Meaning, your radar isn't gonna be able to see him, okay? Your missile as well, it's not gonna be able to see him because he's traveling perpendicular towards your radar. You see, if he's flying this way, he's flying towards you, it's easier for the radar to see it because he's coming at you. But if he's flying side to side of your radar, it's harder to see. Think of it as a sniper, you know, when you're sniping, if you, if you use a sniper. When you shoot at someone who's standing still, it's easy. You shoot someone who's running at you, it's easy. If you're shooting someone who's running side to side, that's a lot harder, right? Radar works the same way. One of the main mistakes I see that pilots make is they'll start dodging, or again, you're the X, they'll start dodging the missile when it comes close. So they'll see the missile at like four kilometers while they're being locked the whole time, and that's when they decide to lower their altitude. At that range, the missile's going probably like Mach 3 or 4, it's going very fast, it's still probably gonna hit you, okay? So don't dodge it last minute, all right? Keep keep paying attention to your surroundings, all right? Now, for head-on locks, all right? It's a little bit more difficult, all right? There's less you can do. If a guy's locking, you're both moving towards each other, and he has you on lock, okay? Uh, there's not much you can do besides drop a lot of chaff, and honestly, spinning works too. You can do a little spinning maneuver and uh, get out of his view but that's hard because he's flying towards you okay that's a lot more more difficult because it's closer range as well usually one more thing on the topic of cw or constant wave is you can kill friendlies this way so you got to be keep in mind or i'm going to draw from this perspective now and make it a little bit easier so as i said your radar has an area an angle it can see all right it's like your eyeball even though you're locked on one guy so let's say you're locked on that doesn't mean you can't see other things, right? Just because you're staring at something doesn't mean you, uh, doesn't mean you, uh, you can't see other things around you, okay? So if your radar's locked on an enemy, you fire a missile, but during that flight time, a friendly flies in front of your radar. If your missile deems it to be an easier target, it will go for your friendly, okay? Just because you're locked on a guy doesn't mean you can kill him is what I'm saying, or it's only gonna go for it. Your missile can make decisions on its own based on what its radar tells it, because it's constantly illuminating the targets. So keep that in mind when you are launching close range Fox 1s. Now that we have that out of the way, let's get into actually using the damn thing. The main key values you're gonna need is change radar slash IRST mode, which allows you to change the radar into different modes. Your radar has multiple modes. You can change scope scale, is another bind you'll need, and radar lock within visual combat, and radar lock target. This plane has multiple radar modes, as I mentioned. SRC, which is the just your regular search radar, it's best for high altitude, with little ground cutter. SRC PDV HDN, only really used for head-ons, it has a minimum range it can be used, and think of it as a long range ACM. Uh, it's also a post Doppler mode, meaning it filters out the ground, Although, to be honest, it's kind of useless in the game, you should be climbing to use your powerful radar in general. 
You also have something called ACM, as I mentioned, which is air combat maneuvering. It's used for closer enemies, and it automatically locks an enemy when they're inside the box. Being, keep in mind, the range being roughly 10 kilometers or 6 miles in this mode. If you're launched on by a missile, but you already have one in the air and you're tracking an enemy, you can do a crank, since your radar has a gimbal and will keep the lock up to 45 degrees angles. Cranking meanings defending against a missile, but also keeping the lock on that enemy. Now when you're using SRC, and trying to lock an enemy, they will appear as a green. They will appear as green lines on your radar. You're gonna have to press the actual radar lock button, whatever you binded it to, to get that lock. You can also lock people as far as you set your scope. Your scope can get all the way to 360 kilometers, but I recommend using 96 because most maps are about that size now. Once you have an enemy locked, you're gonna wait for launch authorization, which is when both of the red circles will be fully lit up. When you have someone locked, the green box will appear with a bunch of useful info, info. The green circle with the line indicates where the enemy is going. If it's far to the right or left, he's notching. If it's pointing up or down, then he's going down or up. If it's a dot, he's flying towards you. You also will see a number along with M slash S, which stands for meters per second. That's how fast or slow he's going in relation to you. If you use the box radar, it's the same concept unless you're manually slewing it, which you would have to actually hover over it and click it. Radar missiles can be used at any altitude and are harder to dodge than IRs or infrared. Although sometimes they have difficulty tracking, especially if the guy is on the same speed as you, the F-4 can carry up to four FOX-1s and four FOX-2s, heat seekers. It carries the AIM-9Hs, which are okay and can be used with HMD, but they work best from rear aspect. These missiles are IR or infrared and don't need a lock, they just need a heat source and they can be flared. Remember when you dodge an IR missile, you gotta cut your afterburn and drop multiple flares. Otherwise, you will get hit. You also should be changing the direction you're going, otherwise the missile will still track you. Playstyle wise, you're kind of a missile bus. Climbing is good, but if you can't climb or aren't comfortable with it, you can stay low and just launch missiles at guys higher than you using ACM. Situational awareness is very important top tier, and you should always be looking around you. To recap what we learned really quickly in this video, and then I'll let you go, is with Fox 1's you gotta keep a constant lock, and you should be looking around you while you're launched on it. You have to keep that guy eliminated the entire time, and your missiles can track very well. They go up the speeds of uh, Mach, f I think Mach 3 or Mach 4, alright? You should also be constantly aware of enemies launching on you with your RWR pings, and you should be deciding when you're launching on a guy. You know, again, as I said, you don't want to launch on a guy who's really far out because you're just giving him more time to dodge. Think of it as throwing as a dodgeball. If you threw a dodgeball across the entire court, that guy's going to see the dodgeball arcing towards him. But if you threw it at close range right in his face, there's less time to react to it. Missiles work the same way. Honestly, I think the F4S is best used as kind of a brawler, getting head-on shots with those AIM-7s. They are very good. Again, using ACM, everything auto-locks for you. All you have to do is fire, as long as those two red circles are lit up. And again, a lot of people have a lo lot of difficulty dodging head-on shots. They might be flying towards you. Now, if, someone's, if you fired at someone, but they fired at you, you're going to want to dodge their missile first. Don't focus so much on getting air kills, Rather, just surviving the whole match. It's a lot harder now with these 16 by 16 players and larger maps. Anyways, that's about it. I hope this short video helped you out. I don't really make videos this style, but, you know, I'm watching a lot of people kind of struggle with it, so I was hoping I could help anyone out there. Uh, like this video if you want to, but always, splash those bandits. Have a good day.